Good morning, everybody. How are you all today? Sorry, we're three minutes late. Do apologise. Mirren had had to have her hands washed or something. She's upstairs with her big brother, and I've got Alex here with me. And then the postman came to the door as well, so it was it was all. Anyway, hope you're all well today. Happy Tuesday. Um, good morning to all of the Dunbarney crew. Dun Good morning to Abernethy Posse and good morning to anyone else that is from a different school. As per usual, we are here on Tuesday morning between 10 until who knows when, normally until about half past 10 with a primary four to seven art lesson. Today's quite tricky, so probably is more suited for the uppers. Um, this is actually our last age appropriate lesson. I did a little vote last week, a little poll last week on the page. Hi Lily, sweetheart, good morning. Um, I did a little poll last week just to get some feedback. Just I wasn't sure if there was any point in doing anything over the holidays. I know that you're all busy. Hi Sam, nice to see you this morning. Hi. So we did a poll um, just to find out if anyone was interested in art lessons. The last holiday, the Easter holidays, I still continued like normal and it was a bit of a disaster. I was lucky if one or two people were doing the lessons with me. So I was just wondering, is there any point in doing it over the summer? But 75% of the poll was, yes, please do it. So we're going to keep going. Morning, Kirsty. Nice to see you today. Miss you. Um, so 75% of you did want the lessons to continue. However, I'm not going to keep going with two a week. I'm just going to do one a week. And it's not going to be for primary one or three or four or seven. It's going to be for everyone. So it will be a bit more like a workshop. It won't be a lesson. It'll be more like a workshop. It'll be a lot more flexible and a lot more creative. Fingers crossed it works. Mrs C, you got a, you got a pet bunny. Wow, I think I saw that on Facebook. I think Mummy posted it on Facebook. What's it called? What's the new bunny called? Let me know. I'm waiting with a bit of breath here. Right, primary sixers actually. There's a few of you on today. Sam, I don't know if we've done anything like this before. Primary six, you have done something similar to this before. Think back to Christmas, think back to winter. You did a pre-painted landscape back then, um, just with black and white, just use black and white as our theme. So today we're going to be springing forward into summer, if you want, it's actually up to you. We're going to do a, a landscape, a pre-painted paper landscape. Your new bunny's called Bun Bun. Hmm, like it. What do you think of that? It's MLG, according to Alex. Okay, right, so let's, let's talk about today's art lesson. We've blethered enough now. Right, so today we're going to do a landscape. Now, this is one of my favourite top 10 art lessons to do. Normally, I do this over a two-weeker. So normally in class, our classes only last for 15 minutes. Normally, what we would do is we would pre-paint our paper one week, leave it to dry. The following week, we would come back and we would make a collage with our paper. Today, we're going to try and nail it in one art lesson. If your paper at any point is too wet, go and get a hair dryer and blast it with a hair dryer or just leave the lesson. Just leave the lesson and pick it up later on again. I have actually pre-painted paper last night, so I've got dry paper sitting with me already to do step two, um, so it won't be a massive problem. So as I just said there, we're gonna first of all pre-paint some paper. If it's still wet for part two, blast it with a hair dryer or come back. I'm gonna post the lesson as per usual on here and on YouTube, so you can always catch up later. YouTube's a new thing, by the way. I finally worked out how to put videos from Facebook onto YouTube. Took some doing, though. Um, so there's a new way to access everything. The YouTube channel's much easier because they're just it's just videos and that's it. Whereas the Facebook page has got photographs and it's got instructions. It's got a bit more to it. So I'll still keep the two going together. I'm talking really quickly today. Huh. Right, so resources for today. You will need... Four pieces of paper. Now we've gone for A5, which is half of A4. You don't have to. You can go as much as you want of this. And by the way, thank you, Alice. <laughs> by the way, you don't need to paint all of this. So if it's taking too long and I rattle on and you want to move on, just go for it. So four pieces of A4 paper. A5, A5, A5 paper. Four pieces of A5 paper. It's up to you what colour you go with, by the way. I've gone for plain white cartridge, but it's up to you what you go for. I've also got out of a lovely magazine that my mother-in-law gave me. She was always giving me her old magazines to read, but I've read this one now. So I've got some sheets of news in the magazine just to keep on the table to keep it nice and clean. Because um, we're going to have to paint right to the edges with the paper. 
So you've got paper, you've got newsprint. We are using these kind of watercolour paints. You probably, if you've not got these at home, they're not expensive. The tray's a couple of quid and these are about three, or three pound or three pound fifty, I think they cost me. Um, and they last for ages. And you can turn them over if they start to get dirty. Don't ever, don't ever wash them underneath the sink. I get really cross with boys and girls for doing that. I see a lot of urine in them underneath the sink. It just dilutes them and melts them and turns them to mush. You know, with water everywhere. Um, and then you can not lift them out anymore. So if you ever want to swap colours or anything, you can't because they're stuck, they're welded to the tree. Just, if they ever get dirty, get a wet paper towel or a wet bit of kitchen roll and just wipe the top of the surface off and that's all you need to do with them. So we're using these paints. If you've only got watercolour paints, that'll work just as well. A little bowl for water. In the classroom, I always give out bowls for water. You should know by now. That's because it avoids you doing that with your paintbrush and knocking over a massive cup. The height works, so a bowl's lower to the ground. You can't wiggle your paintbrush in as much. Um, so we use a bowl of water. And what else have we got? Oh, we have got a stubby brush. I put on the instructions <coughs> a stubby brush. If you weren't sure what I meant by that, I think I might have put horse hair brush. <coughs> Bless you. Hay fever's hitting us hard today in the Cochrane household. Um, these are horse hair brushes. So they're much, much tougher. And they are quite bristly. A bit like my hair at the minute. Wait, a bit horse? more stubby. So we've, we're using a horse hair brush. So if you've not got one of these. Wait, is that what this is? Yeah, that's what that is. You need one of these. Okay, and also just a bit of old sponge from, so this is from Mr C's uh, big sponge that he uses for washing the car because I quite like the texture of it. It was getting a bit grubby anyway, he needs a new one. Right, so that's the resources that I think we need. For step two, once your pre-painted paper is ready, please don't. You need just a, an A4 or whatever size of paper you want to go with to stick your textured collage onto. And also, I've just gone for a bit of backing card there just for when it's finished, just to stick it on to give it a nice frame. But you don't have to have this, but it just, if you have it, go for it. Right, also for step two, you'll need something for drawing with. Now, I have got here some chalk pens, sharpies and crayons, which actually should have probably gone for oil pastels. Alex, could you please go over to the cupboard by the sink and get the tree of oil pastels? Instead of crayons, please. Could you go and do it now, please, instead of brushing your arm with a paintbrush? No, right, so you'll need that for step two, something to draw with. And also, gosh, how could I forget? A print stick. The cupboard there beside the sink. Yeah, open it and look. They'll be in there. Right, so behind me here, there's a list. Now, you'll be seeing it in mirror image. Yes, darling, that's the ones, thank you. You'll be seeing it in mirror image just because I don't know how to work out that you flip reverse it yet. So the techniques that we're going to be doing are washing. Thank you. Sponge, stipple, and I've underlined the word tip. That's a, an important one. What's and stipple? scumble. Well, can you just let me talk to the class and then I'll tell you what it's going to be. Funnily enough, I'm going to do that. Right. Wash we're going to do first because that needs a lot of time to dry. The other three you can do in any order that you want, but I'll show you them one at a time and let you go away and do them. So wash we'll do first, leave it to dry, and then we'll do the three S ones. Alex is already asking what they are. I'm going to explain that. I'm not going to just, just <coughs> talk to you. Bless you. Right, let's get going. One piece of your A5 paper. Put it onto the newsprint that you have. This is just a photo from my bedroom window this morning. I'm so blessed to have this gorgeous view every day to wake up to. So in case you didn't have get a chance to have a think about what landscape you want to do, this is maybe one that you could work with for your inspiration. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a sky and we're going to use the wash technique for that. It's perfect. So either go, yeah, that's the finished one. So either go bright blue if you're going for a sunny day or if you're like today, you want to go more grey, use grey colours. Right, what you're going to do first of all, before you do anything, is you are going to soak your paper just with water. Just with water. That helps the paint disperse quickly and in a nice way. Okay, it doesn't end up with too many stripes in it. So what I want you to do first of all, Alex, could you get yourself ready please instead of, do what I've just done, paper onto your newsprint, just one piece please. What you're first of all gonna do is you're just gonna soak your paper with the water. 
If you're a teacher watching just now, by the way, and you're planning on doing this as a lesson, the most important thing that you get the boys and girls to do before they start all this is to make sure they've put all their names on the back of those bits of paper. Because the following week, you're going to have to hand all those bits of paper out again. And it is chaos deciding who's is who's. Or get them just to put them in their tree once they're dry. Okay, so if, you, if you're planning on doing it as a lesson, names on the back. Right, so I've soaked my paper just with plain water. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my colours that I want my scarf to be. I'm going for a grey day today, so I'm just going to go for black. So what I'm going to do is I'm now just going to wiggle my brush, not adding any more water to the brush. I'm going to wiggle my brush into the black. Now if you're going blue, go blue, whatever sky. I mean, you even might have been doing a sunset here, it's up to you. Use your creative juices at this point. So I'm just going to wiggle my brush on that paint. What I'm looking for on the paint are bubbles. When the bubbles start to appear, when the bubbles start to appear, that's when you know that the, the paint's gone nice and thick. And now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to left to right, because I'm a righty. If you're a lefty, you're going right to left. I'm just going to sweep my brush right across the top of the page twice. Oh, let's go for three. Okay, and already I'm seeing that colour bleeding down the page. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush next to that line I've just created. One, two. I'm going to stop. I'm going to do it again. One, two. I'm going to stop. I'm going to do it again. One, two. I'm going to stop. I'm going to do it again. One. I'm just going to do it one more time. One, one. You need to move quite fast with this because the paper will start to dry quite quickly. One. And what you should find is the Ooh. paint is naturally thinning itself out. So I don't know if you can see that very well. Oh, okay. That was just getting my brush loaded up with paint once. The paper was already wet and I just swept it down. The paint starts to merge into each other and create really, really nice patterns. Almost looks like clouds in your sky. Okay, now you're going to leave that to dry. And don't keep going over it again and again and again and again. I often see that in the classroom because these brushes are quite tough. Yes, sweetheart, you, yep, da, yep, Sam, you can use paint and tubes, no problem at all. It'll be a little bit thicker, so what you might want to do is just put a little bit of water in it. But yeah, just use that paint as it goes. I'd be interested to see what happens there, actually, Sam. I'd be interested to see how your results end up at the end. Might be a wee lesson for me. Okay, so don't keep, your paper is very fragile, I don't know, it's beautiful. Your paper is very fragile at the moment because it's wet with all that water that you put on at the beginning. So don't punish it. Don't keep going over it again and again and again because eventually you're going to burn a hole in that. You're going to go right through the other side. I'm going to move this to the side right now because I need some space to dry. So eventually when it dries, it'll become like that. That's my blue one. That's from yesterday. But because you didn't use loads of water, this won't actually take very long to dry. Okay, I'm going to move that to the side. Right, next up, we're going to go for the three S techniques. We've got sponge, we've got stipple, we've got scumble. While I've got my brush, let's just keep going with the brush ones. Okay, I'm going to give it a bit clean because I'm actually going to change colours now. Oh. Alex, darling, could you go and get the kitchen roll? I'm not very organised today, am I? Could you go and get the kitchen roll just from the sink, just to dry this brush? I don't know if did I put kitchen roll paper towels on the list. I don't know if I did or not. It would be very handy if you could not bought them. Right, you'll need your second bit of newsprint now. And now I want you to think about the hills that are going to be in the background. Okay, what colour do you want those to be? Do you want them to be dark green? Do you want them to be, I don't know, brown? What colour do you want them to be? Can I just get one bit? Right, I'm going to dry my brush quite well. I want it to be damp. I don't want it to be soaking. Okay, I'm going to go for like a dark green colour. So what I'm going to do is, I've only got six colours here, but using my colour wheel knowledge, I'm going to put a little bit of blue into the green. Everybody, I'm going to apologise now. I've got Mirren at home just now. And I can hear her shouting upstairs. Now, if I need to go to her, I'm going to stop this and restart her. Okay, just to warn you. Right, so, I've got quite a dry brush. It's quite damp. And what I'm going to do is the technique that I always tell you not to do in class. I always tell you not to do this in class. It's called a scumble. In fact, I hate people doing this to my brushes because they break them. But if you're using a tough one, it's actually okay. So all you're going to do is you're going to put the brush down on the page and you're just going to wiggle it across. Really therapeutic. It's great. Painter and decorators used to do this on walls. 
back in the 90s. I don't know if they still do. Um, Might still be a cool technique, I don't know. And the good thing is with this, you can actually do lots of different colour variations in this. So you, you could actually have a little bit of yellow in place, places. You could have a little bit of dark green, it's up to you. You want this to be quite dry. So if you do it and there's a big puddle of water, stop, dry it up, mop it up and keep going. Okay? So I like dent in my paper. Well, it doesn't really matter. Could you just get going, please? Without the dent in your paper. Yeah. So it so no, dry your brush. You just want it to be damp. If you've got a big puddle of water, it's going to become so. I'll just show you that up close. It's that kind of technique. So it's called scumble. Thank you. At home right now, you're probably not having to share paint, so you're probably not fighting with somebody who's um, changing all the colours of the paints that you're using. That's it. Oh yeah, Alex. You've got the technique going. Get your decoration out. Remember, go right to the edges with this. So that's why it's important that you have got some newsprint underneath. Because you're going to go right to the edges. You're going to ruin the table that you're working on if you've not done that. And you're just going to keep wiggling that right across. If it gets too dry, just get a little bit more water on your brush. Yeah, so Mr. C's away just now. He's working away from home. So I have got Harris upstairs just now looking after his sister so if at any point I have to disappear I'll pause it and I'll re come I'll come back on we do not want a minute invasion trust me right so that's your scumble okay now that's actually because we didn't use a lot of water it's pretty dry already okay but again I'm just going to put that to the side this is it completely dry from last night so it went from brown to green it's a really really nice effect if you're at all interested, this is how the guy that does the Hungry Caterpillar does his illustrations. Eric Carl, he, um, he paints paper and chops them all up to make all the illustrations. It's a lovely way of working. Right, next up. Again, need the brush for this. And this one is called the Stipple. Stipple. So all you use is the tip of the brush. That's why I've underlined tip. Um, it gives a really, really nice textured effect, so it might be good for trees, for shrubs, for grass, whatever it is you want to do. So I am going to make mine... Actually, I'm going to go... I'm going to get a bit of colour in here. I'm going to make mine a bit like lilac-y purple. So, where's my paper going? Have you talked to me? So this time round... What you're going to need for this, this is lovely, put it to the side. What you're going to need for this is just, again, quite a dry brush. I'm just going to clean that off. Actually, I'm just going to go for yellow, boys and girls, because it's going to take me for ages to wipe these colours up. Um, what you need is quite a dry brush. And this time, all you're doing is... Mum, I'm just at the door. Why is Harris at the door? Oh, yeah. It's just going to wait. Harris, what is it? He's gone. You're just using the tip of the brush and you're just tapping that all over. Now you need to make sure that your brush isn't too wet because when you do this, big puddles might appear if it's got too much water on it. Can I go for that effect? So is that the, like the field? It can be whatever you want it to be. I don't know what your landscape's going to be like. But you're just using the tap. You're not slamming it down. You're just tap, tap, it tapping. Nice. It is nice. And I mean, you can have one part of it that's quite light, you can have one part of it that's darker, you can get as many colours in there as you want. But please don't use a lot of water here. And if you have got really, really wet areas, just go back into it and drag it across the page. By tipping, of course. When I say drag, I don't mean drag. Stop being so aggressive with the paints, you. Honestly, that's so... <laughs> That's lovely. It's really, really very beautiful, you just sit like this. This is another one of these lessons that I do in class, and it can be a bit crazy at first, but then once everybody knows what they're doing, you could hear a pin drop, because everybody just sits doing this, creating their textures. It's the following week when we're trying to meet them into college, as that's when it all goes a bit noisy, but um, it's just one of these lovely lessons. But it does take a lot of prep, so if you're a teacher right now and you're thinking, oh, this looks nice, it takes a lot of prep to do this, because you've got to cut up all the paper, you've got to hand out all the materials, the resources, um, this is when home learning is great because I'm not having to do all that. I'm just actually doing the lesson part and looking at the lovely results. Could you stop flicking paint, please? I've now got yellow splodges yeah. all over me and all over my lovely sky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
the bed's for what? It's not black on tonight. Did I? It's gone now. It's gone now, yeah, that's because it doesn't exist. Face. Okay, right, so we're done stipples. Every house is sad, you always say sad face. It does, it was sad face, sad face, sad face. You don't want to do it anymore. Because it's not sad anymore. Right, okay, stipple done. Da da da. And we'll put it to the side. And another thing is, what you might even want to do is when you're making your collage, if you're with someone else, you might want to share paper. So when you're coming to make it, you might look at the ears and go, oh, can I swap with you? Or, or tear it in half and, and share it. So if you're doing it with someone else, it'd be a good way to do it. Right, next up is the sponge. Left that one to last on purpose so I can get rid of my brush now. And with the sponge, you don't want a lot of water on the sponge. They're very absorbent. So all you want to do is you just want to get a little bit of water onto your sponge. And with the paper that's left, so the last piece, Mess in here. Where did the last piece go? Yes. But the last piece you're now just going to sponge on top. Now these this is great for like making like rock textures, so it could be good for your mountains, anything you want really. So I am actually gonna go where's my photograph on? I this time I'm gonna make like a brown. So if you're not sure what colour mix in, get a little bit of red with your green. Best way to make brown. And I'm just gonna sponge that across. Now, if you have just sponged and there's a big puddle on your page, stop, dry it up and start again. Because you want those textures to appear. You actually want them on your page. And in an ideal world, what you actually would do right now is you would do this one colour all over, leave it to dry, go back over it with another colour. So go back over it with a black or something. But um, as we know, it's not really an ideal world. Is it? What is? Oof, that's a deep question. That's a deep, deep question. That's quite an old magazine, so don't go thinking you're reading the gossip. I love in class, I'm sure a lot of teachers will agree with this, I love in classrooms where you hand out like newspapers from six months ago and the kids read them. They're absolutely engrossed by them and you've got to stop and say, Right, if the sponge is getting too dry, like mine is, just mop up a little bit of water, even if it's some of the, the splodges from around the table. Sorry Alex, you're going on the sponge, aren't you? You'll fall behind now, I should have actually had two sponges ready. Right, so we've got what was a brown, which now looks a bit mossy in places. Here you go. I think it looks nice. You like it? Thanks, Dana. Right, there you go. Right, so we've got my sponges there. Okay. Right, so we've got, that looks lovely, it's like a marbled effect. Right, so we have now done four painting techniques. Now today we're going to do it as a landscape, but in future you could use those techniques for anything. So if you're looking at them right now thinking, ah, I could use that for doing a rock formation, whatever, go for it. So, skills for life. Painting skills for life. Right, next up, while he's dabbing away. He's definitely That's lovely. I'm just going to now show you, now... Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how to do your collage. If your papers are still wet, put them aside, just watch me, and then come back and do it later. Okay? I should have warned you that earlier. Right, so I'm going to actually use my papers from yesterday. I'm not going to use the ones from today, just because they're too wet still. Some are dry, but most of them are still too wet. Um, what I might do once I'm done with all this today is make the other one. Actually, this one. Yeah, they're all dry. Right, I'll move that to the side just now. So, taking my photograph as my inspiration. What I'm going to do first of all is make sure you have your sky up the right way. The last thing you want to now do is have it on its side and decide are you having the darker bit at the bottom? Because sometimes that can happen if it's a sunset, or are you having the darker bit at the top? It's up to you. So, what way up are you going to have it? And we're now going to tear our paper. Now, it's really important at this point that you remember the direction that all your papers are going in. You want them to try and fit in. So you're almost like lengthening the papers. So you're almost laying them one on top of the other. So you're not having them that way. 
and you're also not having a split down the middle. You want them to be in strips. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm just gonna take the piece that was supposed to be my, my, my hills in the background. Okay, so I'm gonna go for this, the dark green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear it from left to right, but I'm not just gonna tear it in a straight line. I'm gonna think about the way the mountains go, the hills go where I stay. Um, I know Bridgie Burns got surrounded by hills as well. So if you're Dunbarney crew, think about the Motif Hill, think about the Oak Hills. If you're Abernethy, you'll see the Oak Hills as well. They're that way. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to tear the paper. Okay, a little bit like that. My paper's still just a little bit wet, so I'm just going to get rid of that little white bit there. Okay, or you could even use this bit here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick that with my pit stick onto my sky. So when I stick it, there will be a bit of sky poking at the bottom. Don't worry, that's going to get covered up in a minute. But don't have it hanging off the edge. Try and keep it in line. So try and line it up perfectly. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on that. And don't tear fast. Tear nice and slowly. Think about the line that you're creating. If there's a little bit of an overhang, don't worry. Okay, don't worry if there's a little bit of an overhang because at the end, I've got my paper trimmer here. I'm going to trim off the edges. At home, you probably don't have a paper trimmer, but you can just cut it off with scissors. Right, so next up, I'm going to go with um, creating the next row of hills. So I'm going to go with this one. Okay, I'm just going to do the same thing again, but this time round, it's not going to be as angular. Thank you, that looks really nice. Okay. Now, what you'll be finding, because I'm going to place that now on top like that, is it's starting to lengthen. The paper's starting to lengthen. That's good. Your picture will be getting longer at the bottom. So again, put a little bit of glue on that. Is your sky quite wet still? What piece of paper have you got that's quite dry? The last one. The last one. Right, I'm not going to let you get a hair dryer out of the last bit because I don't want hair. Okay, so we've stuck that one on there now. And then my last one, which I'm gonna use as my field, which is wheat out there. Well, I think it's wheat or corn. It's slowly but surely gone from green, starting to go into yellow. So I'm just gonna, I want that to be much, much smoother. I don't want it to be as bumpy. And the reason we're tearing is in nature, it's very, 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 well, I don't even think it's, I don't even think it's possible. You would never ever see a perfectly straight line in a natural object. That's always a sign of a man-made machine, okay? So that's why we're tearing the paper. It gives that nice organic edge to it. So this time round, I'm just gonna tear that. That's not nature. This time I've just torn it right across and what I'm now gonna do is just gonna place that at the bottom there. Do you see that at home? At the back, it's a complete mess, but nobody's gonna see the back. So again, just gonna put a little bit of glue on that. In there. Alex, would you start sticking please instead of you can tear your start tearing your bits of paper. Why are you making it wet now? No, you won't be able to tear it. You should just put a little water on it. You need to tear that. Or you can use up some of Mummy's bits. Right, there we go. Looks amazing. Right, now that you've done that, it's time to start designing. So you've got loads of spare bits. So this is when I let you go rip it home. What do you want to do with them? You could tear them up and make them into little trees, which could also get stuck onto your field or little shrubs. You could use the other side that's still white and create little sheep in your field. Actually, I can't do that because I've got a wheat field, but you know what I mean. So you can now start to add things onto this in exactly the way that you want to. You could use the white ones for, for clouds. Just whatever you think is going to be best. Okay? You can use your whatever it is that you've got to draw on top of the office of one where they are. So you could add fences, you could add gates, you could draw little houses, you could draw people, you could do silhouettes of people. We've been doing that of late. So you could do whatever you want for all of your examples, little houses, little cottages because you won't be able to do that with the paper alone. So now you can start drawing on top of this to add things. Whatever you feel like 
whatever you feel is going to work best for you. You could put little um, animals, people, bushes. Not, not people. Not people. Just remember when you're colouring in, however, the houses and things, that they won't be hollow. People always in classrooms they often see hollow kind of cottages getting drawn on. Or when we did it in winter, we did always get up with little snowmen. Um, your trees will probably yeah. have... I'm speaking just now. Your trees will probably have detail to go in as well. Okay, so you can start just really, really adding things on top of that. What is it? What would you like to ask me? My paper isn't the same size as this. Eh, well, don't worry about that. Alex's paper's a little bit shorter in place, but that's okay. You could even add some details, some flowers, whatever you want, really. I'm going to get some white oil pastel at the top here for some clouds. Might even have sunset, rainbow, whatever you think's best. This is when you get to use your creativity. You could, with your neighbour across the table, if you have a neighbour across the table, mm -hmm. if they've got a different type of paper to you, you could share theirs. Do whatever you want, really. That's a stone for Right, what I want you to do at the end, once you're 100% finished with this and you're happy with it, what you could now do, if you've got tail ends, which I know a lot of you will do, you've played and try and keep it as neat and tidy as you can, but naturally what's probably started to happen is you have probably ended up with tail ends on your paper, so bits that are poking out. So what you can now do, I've got a paper trimmer at home. I'm going to add more detail to this in a minute, anyway, but I just want to wrap things up. So I've got a paper trimmer at home. So in the classroom, what we would do is we would go and borrow Mrs. Johnston's paper trimmer. So what you can now do if you've got tail ends is just trim those edges off. Or just use scissors. So if you've got raggedy edges, it just neatens them off. You want to do the top because the top's done already. You want to do the bottom because the bottom's done already. But it just helps with those sides. So keep most of your drawing in the middle. Okay. Just keep most of your drawing in the middle. And what you can then do is just with your background card. Stick that on here to make it short. Which is a bit of a disaster because I'm actually going to lose a lot of my bottom half. That's okay. Okay, so normally in the classroom, what we would do is with a bit of black card, we would now stick this on here, sign the bottom of it, and they would go up in our gallery space. Okay, so that's us really. I'm going to go and finish designing this. I was in a bit more detail, doing a bit more drawing. And I'm going to leave you to finish creating. And Alex is going to finish his off as well. And we'll stick them up on the folder. So I'm going to say goodbye in a second. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone for joining me this morning. Um, it's been really, really good fun. Next week, as I said earlier, we are not doing an age-appropriate lesson. So I think next week we're going to look at some artists. We're going to start looking at some artists. I thought we'd maybe just open up by looking at Kandinsky, who was great at expressing himself. So next week we'll be looking at Kandinsky. So you'll need some watercolours, a piece of paper, some masking tape, maybe some oil pastels or Sharpies if you have them, and just a very, very creative brain. Right, I will go and post this now, because you want to, might want to catch up later, and I'll stick it onto the YouTube channel as well. And I will see you in a little while. Please send me your finished images so I can stick them in the folder. And thank you so much. Took 40 minutes. Right, lots of love. See you soon.